Um, for people that know me, uh, I generally can ramble for hours on this topic. Uh, I'm going to try and keep it as short as I can, but I think it's very important that we acknowledge a couple of things today before we leave here. Uh, what is going to go on afterwards is that we're going to bring a panel, five incredible athletes that are going to help us understand it from the inside out. Uh, Keith and I felt it very important that we uh, present this from a player's perspective, a coach's perspective, a parent's project, uh, perspective, because we've heard so much information from the doctors, which is so vital, the, the neurologists and the researchers across not only Canada, not only North America, but across this world have done a tremendous job in presenting what we're up against. And I was at the Mayo Clinic a few months back. Uh, I see some of the people that were there with me. And one of the things that came out of it, uh, two things that I found absolutely fascinating. One of the neurologists said after hearing about the CTE scare and for people that don't know what that is, Chris Nowinski, a great friend of ours down at the Boston University, it's called chromatic, oh no, sorry, chronic traumatic encephalopathy. It's a disease that uh, produces a tau protein in the brain and it only comes from repetitive hits to the brain. When I heard the neurologist say, we're not ready for it, they're right. We really don't understand because this is an invisible injury. So we're dealing with something that's in the unknown. And now with having people like Keith speak about it and emotionally show you what it's doing to their lives. Ron Ellis and I basically had a, a conversation maybe four or five years ago where he talked about his depression to me. And Michael, you hit it dead on. Talking about depression, you feel guilty. And uh, I, you know, I'm a pretty uh, vocal guy and, and pretty self-confident. I went through depression at 30 when I played in Germany. Uh, that was pretty severe. It lasted six months. Uh, I never considered taking my life, but I thought about how my life was going to turn out being a depressed individual. Uh, my life was at the, I couldn't ask for a better life playing hockey in Germany. I had had a concussion two years prior and never talked about it, never told anybody about it until such time as I talked to Ronnie and he explained to me what he went through. And then I started to see similarities. And when I found those similarities to be true two years after my concussions, then I started to realize there's something to this. And of course, getting to meet Keith and talk about the trials and tribulations that he's gone through has certainly helped that. Uh, I'd be remiss not to uh, mention a few people today. Uh, Brian Green from Plain and Simple, I can't thank you enough for helping organize a bunch of the people that are here today to make sure that we go away, not only for the pro athletes of the world, not only about the amateur, but this is about our brains, your children's brains. You break an arm, you break a leg, a lot different than breaking a brain. Um, Source for Sports has been a great partner with us. Uh, Jennifer Wilson's here today, I can't thank you enough. Uh, a special uh, guest uh, that came today, Michael Stitt. Thank you very much from the Hager Clothing Group. Fantastic what you've done to, uh, to support it. And there's a, a lot of other people that you'll see the logos. Uh, I, I don't want to go through them all because of, we'd be here very long. I can't thank you enough, all the friends and family. And most importantly, we're actually live streaming I have a screen up here. It's really simple. I'm sure you've had a chance to read it. Concussions and head injuries do not differentiate between sport, age, gender, skill level. What's most important, and the doctors have helped us know that now, there's no pill, there's no Band-Aid, and there certainly is no equipment that's going to get us out of this issue that we're dealing with right now. It is only education. The mission statement... Keith basically uh, stated, what we're after here is to educate all of us. It's all of our responsibility. This is not a medical issue. This is not a research issue. This is not a branded issue. This is our issue. We're the adults in the picture. So we have to take ownership and understand that it is your brain. It is your child brain. You can go into a plane and put your laptop into a, into a laptop bag and put it up very nicely in the shelf over top, but yet we bash our brains around way worse than we do with our laptops. We have to start being accountable for that. And so what we've developed through our research and all the great work that the doctors have done to help us know where we stand today, we've developed platforms. We are the first provincial, uh, prevention program that was developed for hockey. And Keith and I have uh, crossed this country talking with many people, and we know it's not just a hockey issue. This is a sport issue. This is a lifestyle issue. So we're developing other programs, but right now we have a program that's called Play a Cool Hockey, and it is a prevention course that has been developed with a lot of great work from our people at Lakehead University and other uh, institutions around the country. Dr. William Montepar and Dr. Susan Forbes have done a great job putting that together. I won't talk about it specifically. Uh, it would take too long, but please ask about that before you leave today. But most importantly, we want you to understand today what the cause, effect, and consequences of this concussion situation is. A little map. 
This is being built now. You can go on the website. It's not 100% complete, but it's very close. It's going to give all the things that uh, Keith talked about. It will represent all of these sports. There are more uh, athletes coming on board daily. We'll have spokespeople in all these different categories, females, males, boys and girls all across this country and the United States helping us deliver the message. It will be in French. Source for Sports has helped us organize the translation of it. So this website will be bilingual here uh, for Canada. Uh, again, this slide is, you've been uh, given a, uh, a uh, PowerPoint presentation that you take with you, the network of strategies. But I think what's really important to look at this, and, and we've heard a lot of people talk of how we can deal with and manage with a, uh, manage a concussion. The, the logo in the front represents the player. And so there's an inner group that we need to educate. Those five people or those five um, that represent that player need to be educated. So we know it's the player, the parents, the coaches, the trainers, and the family doctors. They all have to be on the same page. They all have to have concise and understanding of what we're up against, knowing what the symptoms are. We've done a great job. We know what the symptoms are. We know basically what causes a concussion. The things that we don't know, because if it's an invisible injury, when is the athlete ready to come back? And who better to know the personality than a parent? and the coach, because they're dealing with them on a daily basis. The outer ring is all of us right now. It's the district schools, it's the media, it's the healthcare, it's all of those put together as a collective group to help the five in the middle deal with a daily personal concussion. Every concussion is different. Keith mentioned one time when we were talking, every concussion he had was different from the one he had before. So we have to realize that we don't have all the answers. I, Michael mentioned about the NHL. I think we all know that it's a very difficult position that they've been put in. Uh, I'm not going to let them off the hook. They came up with a five-step program. Phenomenal. We reactive uh, nature of us all. We need to be proactive. Rather than saying that let's soften the equipment, let's change the human element. You can have the softest equipment you can in every sport, but it's still the human element that's with inside that equipment. We need to change that. So what we did is basically put together with a lot of work and a lot of dedication from everyone, we developed our four step. Education, prevention and cure. If we prevent the injury, we've developed a cure. But the one that's least talked about and dealt with right now is management of the injury. And then, of course, injury prevention and evaluation research. Obviously, the great work that Lakehead University and the Sports Legacy Group is doing, and also with Dr. Tatter and the Think First program. They're doing tremendous work to help us all understand the brain. I want to just go on to the management of the injury. There are some great athletes here that have either been affected or their personal friends have been affected in a pro level. We've got some great people. Scott Wasson is here, drove in all the way from Peterborough, who gave me a shout and said, hey, I'm concussed. What do I do now? Not a professional athlete. Played, I think, some pro a uh, little bit in, in Germany. But he woke up one day and he's concussed. His wife didn't know what to do. He didn't know what to do. And he reached out to us, specifically Keith, to ask him, what can we do? Those are the people the Brad Madigans who's here today who will talk for a few minutes. These are the people that we need to help because they don't have all the professional doctors that a lot of these athletes have. We need to get our ER doctors, our family physicians, the pediatricians all together understanding what a concussion is and how we're going to manage the concussion. So uh, we've done a lot of research on that and of course you'll hear more about that uh, as the next couple of weeks go by with stop concussions. We mentioned a toolbox. I mentioned earlier that uh, it was uh, important that if you go out and want to build a house, you need tools. So Keith and I went through all the websites and listened to all the, the discussions about concussions and what's new and what's going to do, uh, what's going to change things. Um, and we basically brought them all together and sat down with our research group and with other organizations and said, what's going to what can we understand from these things? How do we get them all together? So what we did is we basically built a toolbox that we can put the tools inside, and you're going to hear more about that uh, in a few minutes on, on what some of those tools are. Uh, we have an alliance with the CMRG. Uh, they are the people that represent um, the uh, impact testing. 
Keith touched upon it, baseline testing is very, very, very important. I think it can go a long way in understanding where the brain is and where it is after the injury. Another uh, concept that we put together in the platform is called headache. Uh, Larry Langdon, who was here today from the PHPA, uh, threw this out at us and, and we thought it was phenomenal. It's not only about the person that's suffering the concussion, but the people around it, the families, the loved ones that don't understand the depression, don't understand those feelings of uh, helpfulness, helplessness. So we have developed an association. We're just in the process of getting uh, all the medical people involved and, and all the, the support groups to put this together. But it'll be a mother, a father, a, a son, a daughter that doesn't understand understand why their loved ones are the way they are and we will be there to support and the other one that we're very very excited about is called the Alliance we're hockey players we're sports we're athletes we're family and one of the things that I've noticed over the years prior to uh, the Grabowski hit where it really started to heighten all this attention and more importantly obviously what's happened with Sidney Crosby we kind of forgot some of our people along the way there are hundreds hundreds of thousands of athletes, whether they're pro, amateur, or just kids playing on the street that have concussions and are trying to deal with it. We've left them behind. We need to work harder to understand how to manage it and how to get their lives back on stream. 24-year-old guys that have had brain damage, that are sitting in dark rooms, that have put their lives on hold for two years because they don't know what to do. We need to find a way to help them and bring them along. So we've developed a platform called Alliance where players are going to help players along the way, whether you've played in the National Hockey League all the way down into the amateur. The contact, of course, you have in your thing, uh, in the package that we left you. And I just want to recognize a couple of people I think are very important. There are associations that know they have to do something and, and help all of us help our grassroots organizations. The OWHA with Pat and Fran, I can't thank you enough for coming out and being a part of it. Obviously, John Gardner and, and Scott Oakman from the GTHL. Um, you are the groups that we need to influence to help us get on the street. It's not just a video. It's not just a website. It's us as professional athletes, as ex-athletes, being on the street and educating and teaching how we can play a safer game. That doesn't mean that we have to make it softer. We just have to play smarter. And if we do that, as the adults in the pictures, we are protecting the most important part of the whole equation, young minds, young brains. So with that, I want to thank you very much for taking time to listen to my speech. I know Michael's going to deal with the panel right now. Thank you very much.